Well, they are used uh, on, to a limited degree. Um, the as you as you may or may not know, you know, periodontal disease is a chronic disease of aging, uh, inflammatory disease, and uh, there is no cure. So um, <clears throat> it's treated surgically, which is generally uh, designed to uh, debride the wound and <clears throat> try to get healing um, by controlling the bacterial load in the oral cavity. Um, the biggest uh, discovery in periodontics in the last 20 years was the realization that it is in fact an inflammatory disease that is uh, initiated by bacteria, but the bacteria really don't damage the tissues. So the effort to uh, control inflammation has led to the use of nutraceuticals because currently there are no effective and safe, safe being the big word, um, anti-inflammatories that can be used chronically in these patients. So uh, safe methods uh, of controlling inflammation by altering the diet, for instance, uh, reducing sugar intake, um, and etc., but also using nutraceuticals uh, mainly of the uh, omega-3 fatty acid derivatives um, and fish oil. Uh, <clears throat> along with baby aspirin, have been shown clinically to actually improve the outcomes of, of periodontal therapy. So there is a, a segment of the periodontal community that actually um, uses these as an adjunct to therapy. Well, basically patients are asked to um, uh, take uh, fish oil supplements. Um, uh, usually a gram or two a day, somewhere around two grams a day, uh, along with the baby aspirin, or so 81 milligrams of aspirin, um, as part of their, their daily regimen. Okay? And um, this has been shown to increase uh, specialized pro-resolving mediators in the bloodstream, um, but uh, in particular, there are a number of studies now that are published that show that um, this uh, reduces inflammation in, in the gums, um, but it also improves the outcomes of, of periodontal therapy as an adjunct to therapy. This is, it, it's a timely question. I just came from the American Academy of Periodontology meeting and we had a symposium devoted to this topic. Um, and two of the uh, premier cardiologists in the world um, were there talking about the relationship of inflammation to cardiovascular disease and how that's augmented um, <clears throat> by periodontal disease. Um, and then the third speaker, who was a periodontist, um, you know, brought together all the literature uh, relating to the increased risk, uh, the fact that periodontal disease is an independent risk factor um, for, for cardiovascular uh, disease and influences cardiovascular outcomes. Um, <clears throat> the cardiologists focused on the inhibition of inflammation um, and the trials, uh, such as the CANTOS trial, which was an IL-1 inhibitor trial. Um, there are new uh, trials um, which are based on IL-6 inhibitors, all of which are shown to reduce the risk of, of uh, um, cardiovascular, uh, adverse cardiovascular outcomes. Now, since these are uh, inhibitor trials, okay, so by inhibiting a, uh, a specific cytokine, um, you're also inhibiting all the beneficial effects of, of those cytokines. And so these trials are not without side effects, okay, but the net net is that they're protective in cardiovascular disease and so beneficial to the patient. Um, the goal, and which has been made uh, clear, is that uh, being able to control inflammation without, um, without uh, having uh, side effects is, is, is ultimately the goal. So the resolution pathways are, will ultimately be the target. Now the, um, <clears throat> I think it was Frank Hu, um, did a large meta-analysis of omega-3 fatty acids in cardiovascular disease. Um, and that coupled with the literature on the use of omega-3 fatty acids in periodontal disease, uh, while these were never done together, um, they have been done together in animals, and it's been shown that by reducing periodontal disease, you reduce the risk for uh, cardiovascular disease and cardiovascular events, um, and, uh, and vice versa, basically, by inhibiting 
uh, the development of cardiovascular disease, you also make the animals resistant to periodontal disease. So um, this is based on, the meta-analysis is based on a variety of uh, studies that show that with increasing concentrations of omega-3 fatty acids in the diet, you have a basically linear reduction in the risk for cardiovascular disease. Our current um, area of research is in uh, specialized pro-resolving mediators of inflammation, um, which are, of course, derived from uh, the omega-3 fatty acids, and we are using these specific molecules. Uh, in our case, we're focusing on two. Uh, we use lipoxins, lipoxin A4 and its analogs, as well as uh, we've published an awful lot on uh, Resolvin E1. And <clears throat> both of these compounds um, are being used to treat periodontal disease as well as prevent periodontal disease. Uh, <clears throat> and this is uh, basically in development as, uh, as, as drugs um, or, or, or a device in certain countries to um, treat and prevent periodontal disease. Uh, oral topical application is the root of uh, administration. And um, this is, uh, you know, it's through phase one in humans, and um, it's looking good uh, in the sense that these are very safe compounds, uh, <clears throat> as you know, and uh, we don't have a side effect profile at all um, with them, and we're getting efficacy signals in very low concentrations. So the next step is to determine the, the optimal concentration of these uh, molecules um, in a mouth rinse, because uh, they can be applied topically for the treatment of periodontal disease. Um, well, the nutraceuticals, the omega-3 fatty acids themselves, um, as a topical treatment, are much less effective than they are if they're taken um, orally and uh, get into the circulation where they're then metabolized into the active uh, products. So, uh, you know, so the the nutraceuticals that we have currently um, would be would be taken orally um, with the goal of uh, enhancing the uh, production of SPMs in the bloodstream, which would have a, a direct effect on the inflammatory diseases we're talking about.